Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk all about gut health, different ways to strengthen your immunity, and beautiful healthy recipes that will support your healing journey. Today we're going to be talking about candida, what it is, what a candida overgrowth looks like um, throughout various parts of the body, as well as ways that I personally have been using to balance my gut that have worked for me. Specifically, diet modifications as well as fasting. So what is candida? Candida is a common yeast that lives in the mouth, the gut, and the reproductive organs. It's even in the air, it's everywhere. So in small amounts creates a healthy gut microbiome combined with probiotics and healthy bacteria and also a low pH. When we have a low pH, that keeps infection at bay. However, an alkaline pH can transform candida into a pathogenic form. This causes candida to process and break down sugars, and as a result, it produces mycotoxins as well as another toxin, which I can't pronounce, acetaldehyde. Candida mycotoxins disrupt cell communication and confuse the body. When one certain strain of bacteria overgrows, it overloads the system, and that's why when you do have a candida overgrowth, one of the symptoms is chronic fatigue. Candida is an opportunistic pathogen, which means that it's not the strain that makes it bad, it's the environment. So candida itself is not bad, however, in a, an environment where it can overgrow, yeast overgrows and starts to compete for resources within your body that this can become a serious issue. Mycotoxins, one of the byproducts of candida overgrowth, can confuse the body and it can damage tissues and lead to a compromised immune system. Acetaldehyde. This is the same chemical that is produced by the liver when it breaks down alcohol, which causes hangovers. And that's why people with candida overgrowth can feel like they're hungover all the time. This byproduct can cause deficiency in vitamin B1, also known as thymine, and can cause brain fog, irritability, fatigue, as well as depression and anxiety. Three ways to get tested for candida. One is a stool test, the second is a urine, and the third is a blood test. However, these are not completely accurate because you can get a false negative and still have symptoms of candida overgrowth. So the symptoms are the best indicator of knowing whether you have a candida overgrowth. You know, you'd be surprised. With the amount of technology we have, shouldn't we be able to tell? I'm not gonna get angry about this. Major signs of a candida overgrowth include acne, anxiety, irritability, hyperglycemia, thrush, recurring yeast infections, sinus and res upper respiratory infections, food allergies, digestive issues, mood swings, joint pain, headaches, chronic fatigue, PMS, depression, and a weakened immune system. Things that feed candida overgrowth include antibiotics, which is how it's typically triggered, too much stress, too much sugar or starches in the diet, alcohol abuse, chemotherapy, as well as birth control pills. Antibiotics kill all bacteria, however, they don't kill yeast. And so when all the bacteria is gone, the yeast has an opportunity to grow and proliferate and has access to these nutrients. Stress feeds candida because it actually increases cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone in your body. This causes a breakdown of sugar and candida thrives on sugar and it doesn't matter where it comes from. Candida is the symptom of the imbalance, not the cause. Typically the cause are those factors that I spoke about a lot of the time it's antibiotics. Ways that you can heal your gut and bring your candida levels down to normal include number one, removing all yeast from your diet. This is temporary. This is until your gut is healed, your gut can process foods. Number two is to avoid sugars and simple carbs. Number three is to add in antifungal herbs. You want to remove yeast in your body because that's just going to add and compound onto the already overgrown yeast. This is because these foods can be irritating to an already irritated system and they include foods like alcohol, wine, sugar, bread, 
dried fruit, cheese, kombucha, and any trigger foods. This is going to vary from person to person. Trigger foods for me were definitely wheat and gluten products, sugar, any kind of sugar that didn't come from a fruit, like actual fruit. If it's broken down into like monk fruit extract, forget about it. Stevia, forget about it. But that's it's going to be different from person to person. Dairy was definitely very irritating for me. Corn flour, cornmeal is no bueno because it spiked my insulin and I could definitely feel the headaches and all the other symptoms come. So pay close attention to how you feel when you eat these foods and also how you feel once you've removed them from your diet. Number two is to remove sugars and simple carbs. The standard American diet is now prominent all around the world, so don't think that just because it's so easily accessible that it's the right thing to reach for. Raw honey is good, but this varies from person to person. I personally react to raw honey, so see how you feel. Um, simple carbs are things like gluten products, wheat, refined flours. While you're within this kind of restrictive diet, you're only going to be doing it for maybe like two months or three months or however long it takes for you to feel normal again. Number three is to add in antifungal herbs. Herbs are incredibly calming and healing for our system and they have many antifungal properties. These herbs can be drank in teas, you can have them in essential oils, you can have them in capsules, and you can cook with them or even have them raw. So things like oregano, turmeric, thyme, calendula, tea tree oil, lemon balm, and also grapefruit seed extract. Lastly, pardarco. This is a herb from South America which kills funguses and viruses and you will see that there are many candida cleanses on the market and they'll typically have a mixture of all of these herbs as well as enzymes that will help you break down and kill off the candida. Combine these with probiotics and prebiotics which will help to feed and create a healthy ecosystem. These are things like kefir, if you can handle dairy, kimchi, sauerkraut, pickles, anything fermented, anything pickled is going to be incredible for you. Prebiotics are foods that are high in fiber, things like onions, leeks, garlic, um, Jerusalem artichokes. Personally, for me, I avoid all white flours, white sugars, any processed foods. Um, I sweeten my baked goods with dates. I make my own date syrup or any kind of uh, fresh fruit puree. It is difficult, but at the same time, I know I'm healing and I know I'm doing something that's good for me. So another way that you can actually kill off the candida or any other type of bacteria, virus overgrowth in your gut is by fasting. It's Ramadan now, so we have to fast from sunrise to sunset. This is typically around like a 16, 17 hour fast with no food, no water. Fasting is an amazing ancient way to reset and clean your entire system. Fasting encourages your body to flush out all toxins. It creates an enzyme which is called the migrating motor complex that flushes out all bacteria, viruses, and indigestive food particles out of your system. Fasting targets your visceral fat, which is the belly fat, which is the dangerous fat because it's surrounding your organs, as well as reduces inflammation in your body, strengthens your immune system, and, and helps with an array of problems. During fasting or on any kind of candida diet, you are going to experience candida die-off symptoms. This is called the Hexheimer reaction. These symptoms can range from everything. It can range from um, headaches, dizziness, brain fog, bloating and gas, infections. You feel like you're getting worse before you can actually get better. This is a result of toxins that are created as a byproduct of the candida die-off and they range from between 7 to 10 days. It's different from individual to individual. Fasting has proven the most benefits out of any diet I've ever been on. Fasting has reduced my headaches, it's increased my moods, it's increased my energy, and it, it's allowed me to feel like me again. With a candida overgrowth, you're not gonna feel like yourself because you are your gut. You are as healthy as your gut environment. So don't be discouraged because it may feel like you're getting worse 
but that's just the detoxification process. You will get better. With anything, it's trial and error, it's paying attention to your body, it's taking note of how you feel eating certain foods, um, it's reducing your stress. So it's really it's a combination of things. Experiment and be patient and ask for help when you need it and do your research and if none of these techniques work for you, then definitely visit a doctor or a medical practitioner. I recommend visiting someone who is kind of holistic with their approach so that they're not going to instantly put you on antibiotics. Um, in serious cases, depending on how long you've had a candida overgrowth, they will prescribe antifungals, probiotics, and have you monitor it on different dosages. Another thing is that if you are going to be using candida cleanses or probiotics, make sure that you're not using the same one for more than a month. This is because candida can become resistant even to natural herbs and remedies. So be sure to rotate um, your candida cleanses, your antifungal herbs, as well as your probiotics while you're taking them. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If I've missed anything, if there's anything you want me to discuss in particular, I hope that this encourages you to begin or stay on your healing journey because you are strong. The body is itself healing incredible intelligent organism so with everything good things take time so don't lose faith thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time